In this video, we'll look at how radioactive isotopes decay and introduce a quantity called half-life. The isotope radium-228 undergoes beta decay, as shown in the equation here. As time goes on, the amount of radium that is still present decreases, as the nuclei of its atoms decay. Here, we'll start with a 5 gram sample of radium-228 and see how the amount that remains varies over time. Here's a graph showing how the mass of radium-228 decreases over time. On the y-axis we have mass in grams, and on the x-axis we have time in years. Each point on the graph gives the mass of radium-228 remaining at the corresponding time on the y-axis. You can see that at time t, the mass of radium-228 remaining is 3.4 grams. The rest has been changed into actinium-228. When we first start measuring the mass of the radium-228 in the sample, this is what we call time zero. There are 5 grams of radium-228 present at time zero. If we wait 5.8 years and measure the mass of radium-228 again, we find that it's 2.5 grams. So we can see that after 5.8 years, the mass of radium-228 remaining, the 2.5 grams, is exactly one half of the 5 grams that we started with. We say that the half-life of radium-228 is 5.8 years. In 5.8 years, we have exactly half as much radium-228 as we had to start with. So we can define half-life as the time it takes for a radioactive isotope to decay to half the mass that it started with. Now we let the sample sit for another 5.8 years. So now it's a total of 5.8 plus 5.8, which is 11.6 years from when we first started with the original sample. We see that in the second 5.8 years, the mass went from 2.5 grams down to 1.25 grams, so it halved again. If we wait another 5.8 years, the mass halves again from 1.25 to 0.625. We can see that every time one half-life passes, the mass of the parent isotope drops to one half of what it was just before that half-life. We can change the x-axis to half-lives instead of years, and now we can clearly see that every time another half-life passes by, the mass of the parent isotope drops by one half. Study this graph carefully for a few seconds. Pause the video if you need to. By the time eight half-lives have passed by, very little of the original radium-228 will remain in the sample. If we change the scale to years again, we can see that eight half-lives of this isotope is equal to 46.4 years. We could make a similar graph for every different isotope. The shape of the graph would be the same, but because each isotope has its own half-life and the amount we start with could be different, the numbers on the graph would be different. This graph can be used for the decay of any isotope. It gives the percent of the isotope remaining plotted against the number of half-lives. We can use this graph to answer questions like this. How many half-lives would pass for the amount of a parent isotope to drop to 30% of its initial mass? To answer this, we go to the 30% mark on the y-axis and draw a line over to the curve like this. Then we drop a line from that point down to the x-axis. And we see that it hits the x-axis at 1.7. So the answer would be 1.7 half-lives. Here's a graph showing the beta decay of lead-210. It gives the percent of the parent isotope lead-210 remaining as a function of time and years. We can use this graph to answer several types of questions. Here's the first question. What is the half-life of lead-210? After one half-life, the percent remaining will have gone down to 50%. So we draw a horizontal line from the y-axis at 50% over to the curve. Then we drop a straight line down to the x-axis, or time axis. And it hits the time axis at 22 years. So we have determined that the half-life of lead-210 is 22 years. Here's another question. What percent of the original lead-210 
remains after 80 years. We start by drawing a line from 80 years on the time axis up to the curve. Then we draw a line from that point on the curve over to the y or percent axis. And we see the line hits the axis at 8%. So we can answer the question by saying that 8% of the original lead 210 remains after 80 years. Here's another question. What percentage of the total possible bismuth 210 will be produced after 60 years? The first thing we do is estimate the percentage of lead 210 that will be used up in 60 years. We draw a vertical line at 60 years to the curve and a horizontal line to the percent axis like this. The line hits the axis at 15%. When 0% of the lead 210 remains, the maximum possible bismuth 210 will be formed. So if 15% of the lead 210 remains, that means 100 minus 15, which equals 85% of the maximum bismuth 210 will be formed. Here's another question. If one starts out with 3.5 grams of lead 210, what mass of lead 210 will be left after 45 years? We draw a line from 45 years on the x-axis to the curve. Then at the point where it hits the curve, we draw a line over to the y-axis like this. And the line intercepts the axis at 24%. So that means that 24% of the original 3.5 grams of lead 210 will be left in the sample. So we'd be left with 24% of 3.5 grams, which is 0.24 times 3.5, which comes out to 0.84 grams. So the answer is 0.84 grams of lead 210 will be left after 45 years. We can also use equations to find the percentage or the amount of apparent isotope present after a given number of half-lives. Let's do an example. Here's an example. The half-life of the isotope molybdenum-99 is 66 hours. An initial sample contains 2 grams of molybdenum-99. What mass of molybdenum-99 will be left in the sample after 8 days and 6 hours? The first thing we do is express 8 days and 6 hours in hours. We write 8 days times 24 hours per day and add 6 hours. We can cancel the unit D, or days, 8 times 24 equals 192 hours, and we add 6 hours, which gives us a total of 198 hours. So the sample is left 198 hours, and there are 66 hours in one half-life. To find the number of half-lives that have passed, we divide 198 hours by 66 hours per half-life, and we get 3 half-lives. So now we know that the time it was left, 8 days and 6 hours, is 3 half-lives. To find the mass remaining after 3 half-lives, we start by writing down 2 grams. Then we multiply the initial mass by 1 half for each half-life that is passed. So for 3 half-lives, we would use 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. Working this out, we get 2 times 1 eighth, which is equal to 0.25 grams. So our final answer would be the amount of molybdenum-99 left after 8 days and 6 hours would be 0.25 grams. There's also an equation we can use which would work for the previous example and for similar questions. The mass of an isotope remaining is equal to its initial mass times the fraction 1 half to the power n, where n is the number of half-lives that have passed since the initial mass was measured. Here's an example question. The radioisotope thorium-234 has a half-life of 24 days. A sample initially contains 5 grams of thorium-234. What mass of thorium-234 will be left in the sample after 120 days? We start by finding the number of half-lives in 120 days. We divide the 120 days by 24 days per half-life, which gives us 5 half-lives. To find the mass of the isotope remaining after 5 half-lives, we use the equation mass remaining equals initial mass times 1 half to the power n. Since n is the number of half-lives, n will be equal to 5 here. We take the initial mass, 5 grams, and multiply it by 1 half to the power 5. 1 half to the power 5 is equal to 1 32nd. So the answer is 5 grams times 1 32nd. 
which equals 0.156 grams. So the answer to the question is 0.156 grams of thorium-234 will be left in the sample.